Hello everyone, this is Damon with Easy Green Screen, and in this video I'm going to be discussing manual touch-up techniques for hair in your Easy Green Screen extractions. In video one of this tutorial, we did the extraction in Easy Green Screen. If you've not yet seen that video, I suggest you watch that first. In this video, the image has already been extracted, and I'm going to do touch-ups in Photoshop and just show you some of the techniques I like to use. Before I do that, I want to discuss the layers in the layer panel here. Now, Easy Green Screen by default, it exports all of its adjustment layers and your image has a mask. If you just see a single transparent layer um, in Easy Green Screen, make sure that you have selected to export all of the layers because you do have a choice whether it exports a single transparent layer or all of the layers. And you can also set the default in your user preferences for what you want it to default to when you do your extractions. So I'll just show you here. I'm going to hide all the layers that are above the foreground and disable the foreground mask. Now what you see is this is the original image. No pixels have been altered in any way in this foreground layer. Easy Green Screen makes its transparency inside the foreground mask and all of the spill correction and edge hair coloring adjustments happen in layers that are above your foreground layer so that way you have full control in Photoshop to go back in and touch anything you want and you have the original image to work with. So I'm just going to enable the layer mask here and you can see with just the layer mask alone you can see that we have that green fringing in the hair now once we turn our spill correction layer back on, now this is set by the spill correction adjustments in Easy Green Screen, and for the most part, it does a good job of automatically selecting that. Now this opacity, you see at 60%, that is the opacity that we set in Easy Green Screen. And then I'll show you the mask here. This determines where the spill correction is being applied. And this mask is created based on the spill color range settings that we had. And in the extraction, if you remember, we turned that spill color range warms slider up. That is affecting the range of colors in the warm tone spectrum that are affected by the spill correction. And so when you turn that up, it's going to affect a greater range of colors. And you'll see the more you turn that up, the more it'll come into the hairline to start creating or to correct spill. Anywhere this is black, there is no spill correction being added. Anywhere it's pure white would get 100% or 100% of the 60% opacity, but it would get full spill correction. Any gray areas get partial spill correction. So that usually works pretty well without any issues. The next layer I'll show you here is the um, stray hair brightness. I'll just turn this off and then back on. You see that that darkened the hair. This was set up by the edge hair coloring, that brightness setting that we turned down. And we turned it to a level of 50 and you see you've got 50% opacity. And that slider is controlling the opacity of this layer. Now if you brighten it, you'll see this is a white fill layer. If you darken, it's a black fill layer and it's set to luminosity blend mode. So we're just altering the luminosity of the edge of the hair. In the stray hair color layer, we'll just hide that and then show that again. You see that really blends the edge hair color there. Now this is what we created in Easy Green Screen when we did the edge hair coloring. And by default, this is set to 0% opacity. We see we have that at 80 now. But by default, this doesn't do anything unless you go in in Easy Green Screen and change the settings. Unless, of course, you have a preset, and then that preset will set that for you. And the last layer, the manual spill correction, that's always going to be an empty layer set to color blend mode with the opacity of 50%. And I'll show later on in the tutorial what this does. But it just creates that layer for you so you can easily touch up color in your image in Photoshop if you need to. Okay, so now I'm going to discuss the um, first tip on, 
or technique for things to do to adjust the edge hair. And I'm just going to grab the lasso tool here, make a real quick selection around where the hair is. And what I like to do, and you have to um, be on your mask to do this. Now, if you click Alt on Windows or Option in Mac and go into your mask, you're viewing the mask. However, if you just click on it and you see that it's highlighted, any changes you make or adjustments you make will target that mask and not the foreground image. And this mask, remember, is the transparency information. So what I like to do is use a curves, and you can also use levels, but I'll show you with curves. So Control M on a PC or Command M on Mac. I'm actually gonna zoom in a little bit more here just so we can see a little bit better what's going on. Okay, I'll zoom right into these um, flyaway hair strands here. So if we take our curves and push the brightness up on the curves, you can see that those edge hairs are popping out a little bit more. If you go down, then they're more transparent. I'm just going to cancel this and I'm going to go into the mask to show you what we're actually doing. You see that we're making those hairs less transparent or more transparent. Now I'll show you, you can do the same thing with levels. In your gamma slider, if you push that left, you see that the hairs are less transparent. If you push it right, they're more transparent. And you can also push the, um, the white point slider. You can make your image almost a black and white cutout if you want. I'm just gonna leave it here and show you something because a lot of people think that green screen is cut and paste and you hear image cutouts and cut and paste a lot. And I really, really don't like that because that's really not what you're trying to do. I'm gonna make an extreme example here. So if we go back and view the image and you can see how unnatural that looks because it's um, so solid on the edge of the hair. And I'm going to um, hide these layers, these adjustment layers, and you can see just how green these hairs actually are. And if you remember in that first video when I was sampling colors saying that green screen really dominated the color and turned the edges of the hair green, you can really see that right here. Now if you disable your mask, and if you just looking at the image, your eyes want to see this color of hair as red, as the same color as the rest of the hair. And I think it's more of an optical illusion because it's a slightly less green than the green screen and so your eyes just auto compensate that at least for my eyes they, it does but as soon as you turn off that green screen um, now as soon as that mask is enabled and now we're looking at it against gray you can really see how green the edge of those hairs are and so when you're putting a background in you want to do kind of the same thing the green screen was you need those hairs to be semi-transparent so you're seeing the background through the image. And you really see where I overcorrected for that. So I'm going to um, go back to the original. And that's why Easy Green Screen, by default, really tries to make those semi-transparent. That way it's going to blend with your background. And if you turn the rest of our layers on, You can see with all of the spill corrections on, it looks a lot nicer if we're using that semi-transparency for the hair. But you can, like I say, adjust that by that method I've shown you with the curves and the levels. But I do suggest you do that when you're looking at it against the actual background you want to use. So the next technique I'm going to show is if I go into the mask, if there's some areas that got semi-erased here on the edge that you want to keep, a lot of people will think that you just grab the paintbrush and just kind of paint those edges back in. But if you're not careful, you can paint back in areas that you don't want painted in. And it's really hard with your brush to be very precise. So I'm going to undo that here. I'm going to show you a better way I like to use the dodge tool 
and dodge on the highlights. That exposure might be a little bit high. I'm going to turn it down to 25% or so. So how the dodge tool works is it's only going to affect this range of colors and dodge will, will brighten, but we're only going to brighten the highlights. So if I brush over, you can go over several times and it's filling in more and more and it depends on this exposure too on how aggressive it is. But if I go over the edge, it has no effect on the background. And so if you want to do this, you can look at the image when you're doing it, but make sure you target the mask so you're dodging inside the mask, but you're viewing the image. So we can see the effect we're having on the overall, the overall combined image, but we're looking at um, the image itself. So if I go down to some of these hairs, maybe you only want to brighten up a few of these strands of hair. You're on the mask and you're dodging those. I'm going to turn this exposure up a little bit just because I think it will probably work a little bit better for these fine strands of hair. But you see now, now that we are um, dodging in the mask, you can see these hairs are starting to pop out. But remember, just like when we we're using the levels, you can really overdo this. And if you look at this against a different color or against your background, you can see against certain colors or certain backgrounds it might look overdone. Now against white that looks very good, but if against dark I think it's not transparent enough and we're really um, we're trying to make it look too opaque and so we need to blend it a little bit more. And so by default I think what Easy Green Screen did actually worked pretty good. So. But that is a technique you can use. All right, the next technique I'm going to show you is how to manually paint the color back in to the hair. So I'm going to zoom back in here. And to do this, I think it'll be easier to demonstrate with um, these adjustment layers off because they did a pretty good job of correcting the color anyway. Um, but let's say you have an area that you want to manually touch up. So this manual spill correction layer, which is set to 50% opacity, um, you're going to go into this layer, and then you're going to grab your brush tool, and if you just hit the Alt key on Windows or Option on Mac, you can set the color, and you see we're setting the color of our foreground color, and that's the color we're going to be painting in this layer. So you can just paint right over the edge and we're forcing color into this hair. Now, because this is in color mode, um, we can get away with um, painting and not having it look like just one solid color because color mode doesn't affect the luminosity. So you're still gonna have your shades of dark and light. It only affects the, um, the hue and the saturation. So you can also turn the opacity up or down on this. And you see if we go up too high, in this case, I think I grabbed a color that was more red than we want on the edge. But uh, you could always go back in and you know change your color up and you can paint right over that. And usually at 100% it's too strong, but anywhere um, 50 to 75 I like to use. And I'm gonna show you something else. I'm gonna turn this up to 100%. I'm going to turn this into a normal mode. You see on normal mode how flat that is? That's because it's just painting a solid color and then um, it's not preserving that luminous information. So we switch this back to color mode. Turn the opacity of that down to about 50%. You see that looks pretty good. I'm going to um, Go in and undo that here. And I'll show you more real world what might happen in your image because this is with the spill correction turned all the way off. Usually what is going to happen is you might have one area in your image where there's just a hint of spill and it's just not quite enough spill correction in one small area. 
So then you would just go into here and you could even turn it down from 50% if you needed, but start with 50 and try that. You can just touch up one small little area and fine tune that color. And that's usually all you'll have to do. Um, but as I mentioned, I don't think we even needed to do that in this image because our spill correction that we did inside of Easy Green Screen and the edge coloring looks pretty good anyway. All right, the next adjustment I'm going to show you is we're going to do a refined mask. And in Photoshop CC 2015.5, they've actually renamed this to um, Select and Mask. But in prior versions, it's called Refine Mask. So if we right click in our mask, I'm going to go into where it says Select and Mask. And if you're not on the latest version of CC, it's called Refine Mask. And it's the same adjustments either way, but the user interface will look different. And before we get started, I want to show you something here. If you see in the hairline where some of these areas are maybe a little partially transparent that um, didn't need to be a little bit transparent, um, that was because if you remember an easy green screen, we had the choice of... Um, blend or replace for the smart radius and we had switched it um, from blend to replace well what happens is Photoshop's algorithm sometimes can make things a little bit more transparent than you want further into the image and we'd set that value up to 250 if we have left that in blend mode easy green screens algorithm would have forced these areas to say stay perfectly um, opaque However, sometimes the blending into your background looks a little bit better if you have that transition area, and that's why I selected Replace. When we selected Replace, what it does is it's going to take this Smart Radius value, and anything that we had selected in the Dual Mask area, it's going to copy and paste this mask from here and completely replace Easy Green Screen's generated mask. Whereas if you have it in blend, it blends the two masks together and it takes the lightest value of each mask. Now what we can see is with 250 pixels on Smart Radius, it was really um, chopping down into this hair a bit, making a slight bit of transparency. And if you remember at the beginning of that first tutorial when I made the dual selection, I was careful when I made that to not include these areas areas and I said if you take an extra few seconds and only include the areas of the edge here that you want targeted it'll be better and the reason why is I'll turn this off to show that again is because since I did not include that area in my dual mask region it did not allow Photoshop or did not allow Photoshop smart radius tool to come in and erase that and I'll point out too that the reason why the default in Easy Green Screen is set to Blend because most of the time Blend gives you the easiest and the best option but there's some cases where the image looks more natural setting it to replace where if it has more of a transition from foreground to background and I chose um, replace in that image I guess more so I could, in this tutorial, show you the difference on what it does. It probably would have looked better if we had have just left it alone. But in any case, I'm going to show you in here what you can do. And since using this smart radius is going to give you the, more or less the same thing as you'll get straight out of Easy Green Screen, although it could look a little bit different because you'd be reapplying it again, but it's more or less going to give you the same thing. So I don't use that, but what I will do sometimes is come up and use this um, Refine Edge Brush because sometimes this can bring a little bit more detail back in the hair. So if you just brush over the areas you want, and often the uh, effect is subtle. And you have to be careful too because you see when I brushed in there, it made that partially transparent. So I'll Control Z to undo that. So just be careful when you do this. You go just right over the edges of the hair and I do think this may be given a little bit better detail, although it's pretty subtle and I don't think it's going to have a large noticeable effect in our image. But this is something you can go in and do and just um, try to refine those edge hairs a little bit more. 
And I'm going to go in and um, undo that here and redo that. And you can see that it does bring a slight bit more detail out in the hair. <clears throat> but I will point out too that sometimes this can make it worse when you do that. To use this um, refined edge brush, you really have to make sure that the edge hair in your image is very sharp in the original image. If it was a little bit blurry on those edge hairs, then that refined edge brush is usually going to make the situation worse. And in the case of this image, um, it was a very sharp image to begin with, so it did do some good. And another rule of thumb is for the refined edge brush is it works very well with dark hair, with dark brown in particular. And with this um, dark auburn red color, it usually works pretty good. But when you get into your um, blonde hair or your um, like your light red, more of a strawberry blonde color hair, that refined edge brush can often just erase the hair altogether. So it often looks better without using it. So you can try it for your image and it can help at times. All right, the last touch-up technique I'm going to show you um, is much more of a manual painting technique. Actually, it's a cloning technique. But sometimes for very difficult images, this can give you the result that you are looking for. And so I think what I'm going to do for that, first let's start back with the original again. I think what I want to do is just hide all of these layers because I think the effect, you'll be able to see more what's going on if we hide these layers. So I'm going to um, create a new layer. We'll use the previous layer as the clipping mask. And then you can do this in either normal mode or dark darken mode um, or light mode if you have blonde hair. I'm just going to leave it in normal mode and we're just going to do it that way for now. And the, what I like to do is um, first make a selection. That way we're only going to be cloning. The very, we're going to protect areas from our cloning. It'll make more sense when I do that here. So I'm going to control click on the mask, or that's command click on the Mac. And it loads this mask as a selection. Now with the selection, when you see your marching ants, selection that's not really representative of the selection because this just represents the spots where it's 50 percent selected it's a soft selection so it's got 256 levels of selection the same as your levels of transparency so now that we've got this i'm going to invert that so you go select inverse now instead of selecting the foreground area we are selecting whatever is outside of the image. Then I'm going to expand the selection. And it's, depending on the size of your image, this is going to be different. I think I'm going to expand it by seven pixels. That just seems about right. So now we're selecting more around the outer part of the hair. And then I, I like to feather this selection that way you don't have any hard transition points. And when you feather, the rule of thumb is to feather less amount of pixels than the selection was made. So we um, selected seven pixels. So I would feather maybe half of that. So I think three pixels will be good. And now I like to hide this selection so I don't have to look at this when I'm working. So control H will hide that. And then it is still selected, but we just aren't looking at the selection. So now what I do is I'm going to grab the clone stamp tool and make sure your sample is set to all layers. And then I'll just hold the alt down to make an area that I want to clone. So what I'm doing is I'm, if there's any areas in the hair that you want to touch up the texture as well as the color, you can just clone it in for another area. But you want to try to find an area that's got 
the grain of the image or the, the flow of the hair that looks similar. So for example, in the edge here where we see this curl kind of coming out, if we find an area in the hair that sort of matches that, we can select that as the area to clone. And then we can brush right over the edge here. And it, you see that we're now brushing in hair color and texture so it looks really, really good. We're just forcing that right in. And you can see we're doing that with all of these layers turned off, all of these adjustment layers. So really the only thing we have is the transparency being set. And then we're doing all of the spill correction and the color correction by using this clone. Now this is a little bit slower of a method because you'll have to go through your whole image and do this, but you can really get some good results if you do this. And usually what's going to happen is you'll have these turned on and if you see one particular area that you say, okay, that doesn't look quite right for, well, this looks pretty good, but let's just say it didn't look pretty good. We could try to find an area that we think could match that and then come in here. It might be hard to see on the video, but we're actually replacing the edge of this hair with information here. And you can go right over the edges of the hair because this layer is clipped to the transparency and it's clipped to the transparency all the way down to our foreground layer. Because all of these layers are clipped above it, every single one of these is clipped to this transparency. And if we release the clipping mask, I'll show you here. Now you can see that any area we cloned is outside or it's not using that transparency. So you can really see what we've cloned, but when we um, have it clipped, you can see the effect that it has. So that's a pretty powerful technique. And I don't recommend in all of your images to use this around the entire hairline. But like I say, you might have one particular area that just you say, hey, I need to fix this one area. And that's a really good technique. And it's a pretty powerful technique to get a really convincing edge to your hair. So these are just some of the techniques that I use to manually adjust hair in green screen extractions. And once you learn how to use these, it really doesn't take that long to do them. And you can usually spot um, what needs to be done in your images just by looking at them. And you can apply these pretty quickly. So anyway, thanks for watching. And if you're interested at all in Easy Green Screen, please be sure to visit our website. That is easygreenscreen.com.